Welcome to the first 2021 VC Task Force Gary Picks event for investors and startups. My name is Joel Rosenberg, Director of Business Development and Strategy for VC Task Force. VC Task Force is an organization where the venture community leadership comes together to address critical issues, provide workshops and other events for the benefit of the venture and entrepreneurial communities. VC Task Force provides access to an extensive ecosystem of VCs, CVCs, and angel investors. You may ask questions during the event, and time permitting, they will be answered live after today's interview. It is my pleasure to welcome Gary's Picks host, Gary Fowler. Gary is CEO and co-founder of GSD Venture Studios, an award-winning growth stage AI venture studio. Gary is also co-founder of the award-winning AI startup, Eva AI, as well as the investment firm, DY Investments. Today, Gary will be interviewing special guest, Roman Mondrick, founder and CEO of SkillCup. SkillCup is a just-in-time micro-learning platform that helps companies to train their remote employees. Roman brings 19 years of experience in the digital learning sector, selling products and services to world-class enterprises, including Coca-Cola, BMW, Avon, Mary Kay, and Starbucks. One of Roman's more notable accomplishments was to lead the team that helped the FIFA World Cup uh, World Championship to train 40,000 volunteers with micro-learning on smartphones. Very impressive. Take it away, Gary. That's great. Thanks, Joe. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Gary Fowler, and as Joe said, I'm the CEO, president, and co-founder of GSD Venture Studios. I've been in uh, technology for over 30 years, and I just love artificial intelligence. So it's with great pleasure that I introduce Roman. And Roman, it's it's interesting because we've had a couple of discussions over the time. You've had 19 years worth of experience. And you've done FIFA with 40,000 uh, remote employees, trained them. Uh, where did this come from? You've been doing this for 19 years. You went to the Moscow Finance Academy, I believe, right? You've got, you know, how does, what's the journey like from then till today? Well, you know, uh, yeah, I'm actually, I have a financial degree uh, in particular in anti-crisis uh, anti management. But uh, I started my, um, you know, entrepreneurial career like um, in in high school. So I've I've did a lot of you know fails uh, like maybe tens of them, uh, and uh, then I set up a digital uh, marketing agency that I successfully sold to one uh, global group, and I was you know in the middle of. Of, of nowhere. I mean, I was like traveling uh, and searching for the next uh, project to start. And I stumbled upon on e-learning and what that was like a couple of years ago. Uh, and I, I, I found out, I, I, I like, I was shocked because uh, uh, after, you know, the digital marketing or all this game gamification we did about high graphics, you know, uh, high production, high quality production that we can advertising. I, uh, I, I saw that, uh, you know, learning courses that, that was like, you know, just text on the slide, uh, absolutely not engaging. And I decided that there might be an opportunity. And so uh, after, after a couple of years, I started the company and, and you know, have this all, all these big brands uh, on board because we, uh, we started to create like high level uh, content um, and uh, helping companies to engage the employees into learning. Uh, and it was pretty successful. And then we evolved in micro learning as uh, smartphones uh, became a part of corporate life. So now we focus on smartphones as a main device to, to deploy learning to, uh, to the employees of our clients. All right, so you've gone, you know, the, I remember the times when people use PowerPoint presentations to do training and it was really boring, really, really boring and not engaging. So let's talk about the differences. <laughs> Tell us about the secret sauce, the magic behind why you decided to do it, number one. And two, what makes you so special? Why are people, why do they want to become engaged with the platform? Well, uh, yeah, uh, the, the main secret sauce is, uh, is uh, 
we we managed to put uh, com complex content, complex learning content in in short chunks, uh, and we have some you know special methodology that we develop in time. Uh, so basically, we can we can chunk any content like whether it's a huge book or some legal stuff or it's compliance or it's sales training we can chunk it on small small bytes uh, and we can feed in a way um, a user so it, it, he or she will feel accomplishments each time he contact with the platform so basically we embrace some you know some brain science uh, how well brains uh, work uh, in terms of endorphins and all these, you know, uh, hype hormones that currently everybody knows about. So uh, this is what we raise. So we uh, we we create some kind of experience when employee grab uh, his smartphone and choose us uh, like a learning platform instead of Instagram. Obviously, uh, it's not like that all the time, but. Currently, we like uh, two times less in terms of time spent uh, in comparison with Instagram or Snapchat, which, which we, we we see as a big ac accomplishment because you know Instagram and Snapchat and all these social media platform platforms they you know are pretty like entertainment platforms. So uh, and we uh, offering to our users learning, which is not you know that kind of uh, engaging and. Uh, by its nature. So given that, um, we, we kind of helping people to spend their time not on useless content, but on useful content. Uh, did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. So what's the magic behind in terms of, and I'm not asking for from a technical standpoint, but how yeah. do you keep them engaged? Because you know what? Learning can sometimes be really boring. I like the idea of the rewards, but how do you do it? Let's take a scenario, you know, Avon, for instance, uh, uh, you know, or Avon like such, how do you do it? I mean, there's a lot of products Avon has, they under, need to understand what kind of products, how to be able to get to the managers, et cetera. So how does it work? What's the, how would it set up? Just run us through what a typical scenario would be like, typical customer in terms of how they set up, what do they get and how does it keep them engaged? Yeah. Uh... You know, I think I would I would start the answer with the word simplicity. That's that's the the whole like the center of Skill Cup universe. That uh, you know, every feature, every, every you know, um, every screen is uh, revolves around that. So basically, we provide companies with a tool that helps them to like deploy learning in, in minutes. So we created some some so to say no code platform that uh, that can that allows uh, anybody like I mean literally anybody to create content uh, without special skills or knowledge or tech skills or design skills or instructional design skills so basically we have some kind of uh, authoring tool uh, that company and the HR managers or learning and development specialists can use uh, to transfer boring PowerPoint slides or PDFs or doc documents into engaging, you know, card-based interface uh, micro models like with minutes. Uh, wow, that's great. That's fantastic because that's the hard part of it, right? So you're basically going to allow, so the democratization of opportunity across the organization. So literally, if I'm a manager, I could create this content if I wanted to do something specific for my employees. Yeah, Gary, I mean, if, if I give you a tool, I mean, after, after 30 minutes, you will create your first micro model that will be like professional look. Uh, it will be engaging uh, because we created methodology that built in, into the tool. So you have to think about how should I organize the learning material? You have to think only about one thing, like what I would like to deliver. I mean, if you have PowerPoint slides or whether it's PDF, whatever it is, or it can be uh, even a website. So you can just copy, copy, cut some text, put some images and the platform, uh, basically it, it, it does that magic that transfers boring slides into um, more Instagram-ish, more social media-ish kind of 
content. Oh, I love that. Instagram is social media-ish. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's great. That, there's a term I'm going to remember now. Okay. Uh, no, it's interesting. So you can create it easily. How do you get people engaged though? So they go down through, create the PowerPoint presentation. Let's say a boss, a manager does it. How do you keep them engaged? What do you gamify it or how, how, what's the learning process like? So let's just say, you know, I complete a module. What am I going to get back from you? Uh, a cup that says, congratulations, you're number one. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we don't use like, we don't have like only one, you know, special magic pill. So we use a variety of tools uh, to engage uh, users. First, as I said, is an instant sense of accomplishment. So it's like it's a big deal for people, uh, you know, this uh, statistics that if, if people start learning on Coursera, for example, only 2% uh, make it to the end. So that's the problem because learning, it's like, uh, it's, it's a big effort uh, to, to, to finish the course. So because we use the micro learning concept, so you have to spend like three to five minutes for each learning model. It's right. easier to get to the end. And then if you get to the uh, end- I see. So having the shorter amount of time they spend yeah. keeps them more it's engaged because they can see an end to the project. They can see that they're gonna learn. Oh, that's great. Because yeah, and, time, and that probably makes them wanna learn faster because they do it so quickly. They're, you know, by the time they start, they're ready to stop and go to the next module. Yeah, and, and, and the most important thing in, in that process that after after these three minutes, user feels like I'm a great guy. You know, I did it. I, I did it. I and you know, uh, and there's a habit start to building up. I mean, um, another three minutes again that feeling. Oh well, I I did it. I did it. I did it. So it's like checking the box in your on 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 your task list. We we feel great when we you know making this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is number one. Obviously, we have some social interaction uh, inside the platform because uh, we, we, we pick some, some mechanics from social media. Like, you know, you, you can put some likes on the content. You can grab to, to your favorites. You can even see another people, uh, other people in the, uh, on the platform. How do they learn? What what answer did they, uh, did they, did they put to that kind of quiz? Or even uh, users can battle uh, with each other, like uh, kind of face to face quiz. Uh, in, do they do uh, that? I mean, does it happen? It's interesting. Yeah, right? they, basically, uh, it's it's uh, when we when we're looking at our stats, we have like half of uh, half a million of users right now. So pretty big, big data. Uh, so uh, we see that this this do do lots of battles is number one feature they use because really? it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. fun. So what level are they in an organization? Who is it? Are they lower level or higher level? Who's who's competitive? Uh, yeah, we have different cases. Like uh, for example, we have one bank, uh, and they use SkillCup like for for the hypo uh, managers. Uh, it's not. It's like two hundred or three hundred of them. They're, they're like high paid professionals uh, uh, and they better like kids. I mean, it's fun. Well, I mean, they, they're competitive with another because that's why they're high performance executives, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nature of it. And uh, obviously we have like Starbucks or, you know, Mary Kay, like we have thousands of, of people and uh, companies can, uh, can do some segmentation, like salespeople will, come, will, will battle with salespeople and accountants will, will battle with Accounts because they, they have they own you know subculture and subject matter field so they can segment it but it's fun yeah. and still it's learning I mean when they battle uh, with each other so they answer the questions they remember information and uh, and all that happens in the in, in that uh, environment and atmosphere of fun so this is how we learn no I like that and so you know it's interesting so um, managers. What about managers are in the, those high performance managers? They carry around all the time and they're learning and then competing, right? Yeah. That's what kind of tasks? Tell me, let's talk about what are the top three tasks that people, that companies want employees to learn? Well, that depends on the industry. Uh, for example, on retail, uh, right now, uh, during the COVID situation, all this, you know, pandemia, 
So uh, the 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 the, high, the the most popular topic is uh, uh, how to how to you know comply uh, with the rules of, uh, of of regulators that are putting some restrictions on retail outlets. Mm -hmm. How to deliver goods because a lot of retail outlets uh, work as a you know as a uh, as a remote post office in a way. So a lot of reta retailers move to delivery model. Uh, because they have to survive, so they have to retrain the employees, like uh, in months, uh, uh, how to handle delivery, how to do that and that. So th this is number one right now. But usually it's like compliance, sales, product knowledge, and instructions in terms of how to do that, that, and that, and that. Compliance, sales, and product knowledge. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. And how big, a, so you did 40,000 during FIFA, but in general, how many deployments do you do? What's an average number of customers per company? Uh, number of employees per company. Yeah, employees. I, you know, I call them customers, clients. Oh, yeah. the ones that are actually, yeah, yeah. I don't mean them. Yeah, so the employees that are engaged with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. If 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 you look like um, an average, it's about I would say five thousand per company. But it's like the average because we have like Avon, we have uh, three hundred thousand. Uh, some companies. Uh, three hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that we will hit uh, one million in two years because Avon uh, uh, they have like you know, an, an army of individuals for selling their products, like they use direct sales model. So uh, in Eastern Europe, it's like one and a half uh, million itself, uh, like the whole stuff that they have to train. I believe in the US it's closer that's, to that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's interesting. So, and what do they do? I mean, what do they learn about products or policies or what, what, what do these companies specifically learn? What's the number one thing that they come in? Is it like, these yeah. are the five perfumes and this one has a woody smell, this one has a, the Burberry smell. I mean, how does it work? Well, first, yeah, you're right. It's a product knowledge because the product line, uh, it's, it's like thousands of, uh, of the sky use right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously people have to know what it's all about. I mean, how to sell that, that, and that. And number two is, uh, is how to sell that through social media. Because right now, direct sales model is uh, all, the, all, all relies on uh, social media. Like right. uh, ten years ago, it was you know they they going from door to door selling that product. Right now, it's about you know posting that uh, on your social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. So uh, they teach uh, they stuff, they feel stuff. How to work with the Instagram, with Facebook, with modern social media that rising oh, like that's TikTok. great. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, historically, Avon has uh, has like ever, average uh, average uh, I mean average uh, age of of a, of a person who sells Avon products. It's like forty five to fifty right now. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was younger than that. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's Avon is is the company with a, with a big history, and historically they have like uh, um, pretty old, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, mature, so to say uh, field stuff and obviously these guys need to be trained how to use yeah, we don't want to be saying all oh, Roman. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm 40 well, plus seasoned veterans <laughs> yeah veterans yeah yeah so so uh, ob obviously th they have to be trained uh, about this new hypey uh, uh, social media things that you know was there was no social media, by, by the way, when I started that. So currently they have to, to know how to do that. Uh, and all, all these social media tools, they're changing like in, in one month, there they, they can be different rules, how to post the content, how to do advertising. So you have to be up to date constantly. So this is number two. And number three is, yeah, you're right. It's about, it's about outfit, how to make, a, you know, how to make a greater look. It's about how to use cosmetics and all these products that uh, the beautiful products that Ivan sell, how to use it to improve your life, to improve your lifestyle, to improve your health and all this stuff. Interesting. Wow. So, um, and how many employees total did you say 300,000? 
Yeah, currently we have like we sold uh, to Avon 300,000 licenses, and I believe that will hit 1 million in a couple of years. Wow. This is our target, by the way. Uh, obviously, it's it's an exception. It's like the the deviation because it's it's a larger larger number of uh, customers that we have. Uh, for example, in BMW we have like one one thousand and a half. In Starbucks we have like eight thousand, uh, um, and other clients. They bought they, they like from one thousand to ten thousand. It depends on the size and mm -hmm. on, the, on the stage that we are in with the company. And how do you charge them? Is it a monthly subscription fee or? Uh, yeah, we are we are a SaaS B two B company. I mean, yeah, we charge. Uh, we have some pricing plans that basically driven by number of employees that uh, are on the platform. So companies can change that during the, the year. For example, if businesses, you know, right now uh, retail businesses, uh, they were struggling uh, during the COVID. So they, they were asking us to lower the rates. Uh, right now they are more or less okay. They cope with the situation and they expanding the plans. I mean, this is the time, Roman. I mean, if you look at, and this is my fifth panel today, by the way. So, wow. um, and I have one more tonight, but give you the heartbeat of the world is that this digital transformation is upon us and ways of doing business, especially you working with remote employees is now just a, not an exception, it's the rule. And so it is the time to go out to really grasp the opportunity. And I'm hearing about these kind of things, you know, uh, training your workers a lot because it's a challenge. If you do have, uh, you know, you're an Apple or an Intel or an NVIDIA and you've got your remote employees, what do you do today? You can't come in their house. You know, yeah. it's boring to get online and look at PowerPoint presentations. Why not engage them with SkillCo? Yeah, companies try to, basically uh, right now, companies try to use Zoom to train employees, but you know, uh, there's a term Zoom gloom. So uh, people like tired, uh, tired of, of online conferences. Uh, and what, what, what do we do? I mean, smartphone is like the device, more personal one that can be used to train uh, on the go when they have some free time. So it's market learning, so it's easy to do. Yeah, well, people don't have a lot of free time. We talked about it this morning. And one of the yeah. conversation was, you know, how many times do you pick up your phone during the day? Well, I think right now it's it's tens, tens of time. I mean, thousands of them. Thousands. I mean, I mean the thousands. thing is, and we don't even count it, but I bet if you did, it could be yeah. hundreds of times, right? What do you do yeah. when you wake up in the morning? You get your phone, yeah. you check your phone, right? Even before you talk to your wife or your kids, many times, unless they wake you up, you'll look at your phone. What do you do before you go to bed? The last thing, check your phone, right? Yeah, exactly. The phone has become an extension of you. And so I like the idea. It's really cool that you blended it together. And, and you know, this is where the future is because this is not, you know, you talk about singularity. This is now part of us, right? This is like, really, your phone is part of your own uh, repertoire. So I like that idea. What do you think? Where are you going to go? What are you doing next? What do you guys, you know, where are you going to go globally? Uh, in terms of money raising, what what are you doing next? What's important for you? Yeah, we we, we see that we hit this uh, this sweet spot. So I mean, uh, we see the value that we're giving to big uh, and medium companies uh, in Eastern Europe, and we would like to expand that. So our main challenge and aim right now is to to bring that what we did to. To global markets. Uh, so this is what we are up to right now. No, that's great. By the way, I have uh, had a conversation with some folks from India this morning, and we were talking about exactly that, you know, training employees. So we're, you know, it's not just a your Eastern European thing, European thing, US thing, it's a global challenge. Yeah, it's a global Yeah, because we, and, you know, we talk about the vaccine coming out, but I mean, it could be months or years before we really see that big of an impact from it. So we've got to keep, society has to keep moving forward. Technology has to keep moving forward. Employees need to learn. We've now, as we've gone down through this digital transformation over the last year, we understand. I mean, look at, look at Zoom. Zoom went from 30 million users, daily users, to about 400 million. 400.
hundred million active users. Uh, Eric's net worth, I don't know what it is today, the founder of Zoom. The last time I checked was 19.1 billion. Oh, that's I remember what well, five years ago, four and a half, five years ago when I was on Zoom with David Yang. David and I were, you know, had one of his uh, investors said, you got to try this out. My friend would say, oh, I don't want another thing. I'm not going to use this Zoom. Why would I do that? I have Skype. Well, guess what? Times have changed, haven't they? And so being on the cutting edge where you are, um, you know, it's, and you know, with uh, Eva, the company that I co-founded with David, we do remote workforce management. And at the time that we started, it wasn't, you know, so interesting to people. Here we are at the beginning of the pandemic, inbound interest is up, was up 38 times. So it is a trend. You got to take advantage of that trend while it's hot because this is a once in a lifetime, let's hope, once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to be able to move forward. And you know they're, they're questing for it. HR folks around the world, operations, chief operating officers are asking about how they can go uh, global, how they can manage a remote workforce, how they can train the remote workforce. So it comes up to this morning it was the future tech, it was a presentation we talked about future tech. So spot on with it. And what about in terms of raising money? Are you raising money or we have a lot of VCs from around the world listen to my show. Yeah. What are you looking for? Yeah, we decided to to, to start raising process uh, and uh, currently we're raising 1.4 uh, US million dollars. We have one uh, soft commitment from one VC from, uh, from Europe. Uh, but we are still thinking about it. So yeah, we open to all negotiations. We will be glad to to meet with the guys who are interested in that field and who can help us basically to to scale what we did on global level. No, that's great. And remember, when you look at those investors, it's not just about the money. It's about how the kind of feedback they can give you. Because when you're looking to them eye to eye on the board of directors, what you want is you want feedback and somebody that's looking out for your best interest and their best interest, which is how your company grows. You don't, sometimes when you get dumb money, uh, it's great to have it uh, sometimes, but it's really bad when you're trying to build a company because sometimes it doesn't move in the same direction as you do. So it's great. Anyhow, Roman, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. It is great to see you. I wish you a lot of great luck with Skill Cup. It's an amazing company doing amazing things, right product, right place at the right time. So thanks for being here. Thank you, uh, Joel, uh, June, and the entire VC Task Force team for making Gary's Picks possible for another round. I appreciate it. Look forward to talking to each and every one of you again soon. So with that, thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Roman. Really appreciate thanks. it. Great, great, great conversation today. We'll see you in two weeks. All right. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Bye-bye.